Thank you, Josh. Hi, everybody. I hope you had a great coffee break. Uh, let's get through the end of the show. So today I'm going to talk about Chrome DevTools and uh, Chrome DevTools for designers in particular. Now, who in this room has not used DevTools before? To use a quick show of hands. Oh, a few, okay. So most of them have been using DevTools, which is great. Just to give you a quick overview, uh, the Chrome DevTools are a suite of tools dedicated to delivering your real-time debugging, profiling, and development environment. Uh, now, that sounds really technical, but it turns out that designers use DevTools as well, which is great. But first, let me introduce myself. So my name is Paul, so you might have already heard. And uh, I'm now a developer advocate for Chrome and the open web at Google. And I am part of the DevTools team to work internally and externally. I'm basically the bridge between outside and inside developers and designers. Before that, I've been uh, working on HTML5 games. And before that, I uh, built a library called JQI, which some of you might know. Um, that's a bit about me, but let's move on with the actual topic. Maybe? Yes. So in DevTools, we have, uh, at least I have, uh, I keep thinking about these three anchor points of what people do with DevTools. The first phase is design, uh, and really the iterative process of design when you're doing a prototype. So you're building a prototype, you're using DevTools to iterate quickly on those tools. Uh, next phase is develop, where you actually crank out the actual side. And, uh, and different panels become important, different workflows become important in DevTools. You're focused more on performance, on the network part, on, uh, on scripting. So a completely different focus. And finally, the iteration. So your site is launched. The V1 is out. Um, it is really the most minimum viable product. But uh, uh, what comes afterwards is iteration. You keep working on a version 1.1, keep working in the element panel, and just keep iterating. Now, designers, we haven't been talking to uh, a lot to in the past. Uh, and that struck me too a bit odd, because I know that quite a lot of designers have been moving steadily to become web designers in the, most, uh, uh, in the most best way that you, they could be, actually getting ready to do prototypes themselves, not just doing visual design, moving into the browser, doing CSS, HTML, turning over the tools like Sketch, where it's super easy to export to the web. Um, and really owning the responsive design story um, other than just letting it to the developers. So they spend a lot of time in DevTools already, uh, most of the time. And my assumption is that most of, them, most of you focus on uh, specific parts of DevTools, like the element panel and CSS, and uh, um, really focusing on uh, the look and feel and the prototype. But uh, if that's wrong, please tell me. Um, but yes, we haven't been talking to designers a lot, and I want to fix that. That's why I'm here today. Now, designers, again, use DevTools to create, uh, to create prototypes, iterate uh, if they want to test out a new idea, make it, test it out quickly, and also to test certain assumptions about, is this button large enough to click? But every workflow is different. Uh, and that's not, not just for the subgroup of designers, but everyone using DevTools uses a different workflow. It's quite astonishing, really. I mean, like, guys like uh, Remy Sharp, for instance, has been, he's been writing a blog post about how he's using DevTools, and is a completely different flow than many others. And every time I look over the shoulder of uh, my pal and colleague, Paul Irish, I just discover something new he's doing differently than, than me, and, and, and both of us are obviously very familiar with DevTools. So you would think uh, we get closer to each other, but no, everyone uses them differently. So it's Im important that we focus on that individuality. Uh, one more. OK, DevTools today. Let's talk about DevTools today and what DevTools can offer for designers today. One thing we introduced recently, which many people didn't even uh, find out about, which is a common issue that we have in DevTools, a discoverability issue, is the new eyedropper. So as you might know, we have, a, we have had a color picker in DevTools for quite a while. But if you hover over parts of the page while the color picker is on, it becomes an eyedropper without ever clicking an eyedropper 
uh, tool, which is ironic because the actual flow is simpler. You're removing one step, and it's still harder to discover. But yes, you can now pick colors. We do have SAS and LAS support in DevTools. Um, we can actually pull in source maps for those. So you can, act, you can uh, change CSS in your page. And with something else that I'm going to mention in a bit, Workspace, um, you can edit those files right in there. You just click on the CSS. Uh, the notation that shows it uh, doesn't show the actual process CSS if you pull in those source maps. But if you click on it, it brings it directly to the source of the file, of the actual SAS file, if you have source maps enabled. The good news is all of those preprocessors usually have support for source maps out of the box. So it's only a common line option that you enable, and it generates them, and it makes it super easy to dig into why something went wrong, why one color, one font is applied here versus, uh, uh, versus somewhere else. So you click in there, and it just shows the SAS right there. Rendered fonts, another one that could be evilly overlooked, but is quite interesting if you're working with web fonts. Turns out, very often, you get just a tiny character wrong in the notation of web fonts, or uh, you notice that the URL is wrong, uh, the browser doesn't support the type of web font. For any reason, the browser is choosing a font that looks quite similar, but not the same. So you're just using it one place, and you don't notice it. That's why we built this. So rendered fonts, if you click on one element on your page in the element panel, it gives you the actual rendered fonts of that element, regardless of what's defined in your CSS. It just tells you exactly what's being used, which glyphs are being used from which font. A nice feature, if you ask me. Workspaces. Workspaces, uh, for those of you that use Live Reload, um, is quite similar to Live Reload, but also different. If you're doing Live Reload, it means that you're working in your editor, and if you're making a change in your editor, uh, it reloads the page automatically after you make that change. Workspaces is different. Workspaces turns DevTools into your editor. So it just literally gets rid of your editor altogether, which means that once you do, once you set up Workspaces, you can change a CSS color in your page. Let's say I want to turn the background from white to black, and it saves it directly in that file and up, uh, reflects those changes. That works for CSS. It works for JavaScript. So live stepping through JavaScript, if, you, if you're a bit more technical, works as well. Uh, how you set it up is uh, something we can make easier, but just to give you two steps, super basic. Uh, in the settings of DevTools, add a folder that makes up your project, uh, the folder that really contains your project, uh, that will brand in a new uh, small notification that says, do you want to allow file access? Then yes, you should click yes, otherwise it won't work. And uh, next step is in the sources panel, after you load your website, you right click on one of those sources that you really would like to edit, you hit map to file system resource. It brings up a new panel with your local files that you just added from that folder, and then you just pick the right file, and at, at that point, DevTools figures out all of the connections between those files in the entire folder. So you only need to do this once for one, one of the random files in that folder, and it will figure out everything else automatically. At that point, the connection is set, and if you hover over one of those files, it will show you the file path instead of the network path. And you can go in there, edit them all, edit them using the CSS panel, but also edit them in the source panel directly. Now, here's one rule of thumb that I mention quite often, uh, which is a very unfortunate thing, to be honest, <laughs> especially for browser developers and library developers. Rule of thumb, a visual design practice is out of fashion when browser vendors have added a way to do it in CSS. That's super annoying. What do I mean by that? Well, think about things like border radius, right? CSS gradients. The moment we got CSS gradients across all of the browsers without prefixes, people came up with flat design. Like, OK, well, shit. Right? Border radius. No one uses border radius anymore. Who needs rounded stuff anymore? Well, no one. Uh, so this has been super annoying in the past. Um, but it's true. The good news is that we finally have been faster than that trend. 
we finally have been faster than you designers could figure out a new fashion in your world. And uh, that one has been animation. Animation is fairly important in the world of material design, which is, as you all know, our new design language. And everything else has been moved to the background. The material has been simplified to paper. Um, but the context really can only be established by smooth, nice uh, animations. And so we tried it was time, uh, we thought it was time to build a really nice animation story within DevTools. So what we did is, I'm just going to show you what we did uh, really quickly. And uh, I know live demos only work perfectly, always work perfectly well, so uh, there won't be any trouble happening here. Um, so let's, uh, let's take a look at, uh, you can see that, all right, perfect. Uh, let's take a look at the Google I.O. side. I'm just going to inspect element to open DevTools, which is really something you shouldn't do and learn the, the shortcut. My colleagues annoy me about that all the time. But now, um, let me show you what we can do with animations. So first, um, let's see, I have this animation here. I want to see if that really is the easing or if that really is the animation that should work. So what I have is this new animation panel. And in this animation panel, I have a slider here. And this slider is a global slowdown slider. So as soon as I use this slider to slow the page down, it slows the entire page down. So have a look at what happens here. Yes, a clap is fine. <laughs> now, not only that, but it works across pages. So all of those are different subpages, and you can preview the animation perfectly well. So that's, that's that. The other thing that we built in, which is another particular example, and before I move to the, to the nicer thing you see in the animation panels, is, uh, is the, curb, uh, the, the cubic bezier editor. Uh, cubic bezier is uh, quite tricky to figure out on your own, so we made it simpler. Let's see, select the right element right here. And as you can see, there's a new nice little icon right there where it defines the cubic bezier in the animation. As soon as I click that one, it gives me an entire preview of that cubic bezier, along with onion skinning to really visualize how it would look like for that element. But also, all of those can be modified. They can be modified in real time and then obviously uh, previewed. Uh, also, we implemented a lot of the cubic beziers that can be found in the pen annotation, but also some uh, material annotations. So as you can see, I can change all of them. Uh, so I have a nice little uh, uh, bit of pre-built pre animations in here. See, yeah, here I can show them. Let's change it here. All right, so that's, that's the cubic bezier editor. Let's go back to the demo because I could show you the animation panel right now, but it, it, is, a, it is still a work in progress, so I'm just going to show a video for that one. Um, because yes, we, we have more. Um, there is more. Uh, have a look at what the animation panel is doing. So as soon as you are on an animation, uh, it shows you the live timeline of that animation in the new animation panel. All the animations that just run there. Not only that, but this whole panel is fully interactive. So in the next demo, you can see what you can do by using the slider to slide back an animation. So first, again, the, the, the global slowdown. But then have a look. I'm dragging the slider, and the animation moves back. So you can preview the entire animation and see every little detail. Now, that, could, that would be cool already, in my opinion. But Everything you see on that animation panel is interactive. So in this next demo, uh, we have this nifty effect from code drops. We move animations around right there. So we drag them around. We change the curve. We change the speed and the length of the animation. And again, all of it is, uh, is live and can be previewed live. Yes. <laughs> So 
So that one, uh, the cubic Bezier uh, editor and, uh, is now in Chrome beta, can be used. Uh, now, this one will be coming very, very soon. It's in Chrome Canary right now to play out if you play around with, uh, I think, no, actually, no, it's not yet, but it will be there very soon. So uh, keep watching for updates. All right, next. Uh, someone once said, if you don't have a mobile website, you don't have a website. I think that's true today, unfortunately, because working on desktop is a lot easier than working on mobile. But uh, uh, this couldn't hold true more, than, more so than ever in 2015. Uh, and that's because what I really think is content is like water, right? So there's a famous Bruce Lee quote where he said, you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. And you put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. So what you really try to focus on is not, let's make this pixel perfect for the device, because then you're not thinking about what matters most to users. And what matters most to users is the actual content. You want to make the content flow into each of those devices naturally. So uh, let's see. Here we go. Um, one of those interesting bits is not just the resolution, but Wi-Fi and network connections. Right? Most people don't think about scenarios other than resolution, and, and, and that's, uh, that's tricky. So what we built into DevTools is a network throttle that I'm just going to show you in a bit. And the reason for that is most people test on office Wi-Fi connection. Uh, now, Office Wi-Fi is very different from conference Wi-Fi, right? Now, it's the same type of network, theoretically, but as you all know, it behaves quite differently. Um, and, and I have to say, this Wi-Fi has been holding up better than most Wi-Fi's here at the conference, so that, that, that went pretty well. So, yes, uh, mobile without network is not the best idea, and your pages will look worse um, if you preview them on the bad connection. Now, I think all of you would probably shake if, if, if I give you the task to preview your next mock and your next management demo on a, on a 2G connection. I think that uh, you wouldn't like that. So uh, just to give you a, a quick demo. Uh, there we go. Let's go back to the, uh, to the Google I.O. site. And then uh, the icon next to the inspect icon brings up the device mode. I'll reload the page to actually make sure the viewport works. And in this device mode, we got uh, a few things going. One is the media query bar. The media query bar shows you all of your media queries on the page uh, and quickly lets you jump to those different resolutions. It also lets you right click on those and reveal them in source code so you can see where they're defined. Now, this looks like garbled stuff because obviously it's compressed. Another nifty trick in DevTools, there's this little icon at the bottom. If you click it, it, uh, it makes it nice and tidy and shows you the exact line. Uh, it also allows you to control the zoom of your page. So this is the actual zoom value. Uh, it emulates devices, uh, and it allows you to drag around the actual viewport rather than the DevTools to make a page bigger or, or smaller, allowing you to not have uh, a moving DevTools all the time. Uh, selecting a model does a couple things. It emulates the viewport. It uh, emulates touch events. Uh, it emulates the DPI if you want to create a responsive image story, as we've heard a lot about earlier today. Um, all of that is emulated. And, and again, uh, it also supports network throttling. The interesting thing with network throttling here is that you might think, hey, there's already tools available for network throttling that I have installed on OS X or on Windows. Most of those tools throttle your entire system, which means that you, you go offline or you go on 2G connection, and then you want to find documentation about the CSS property, and, well, shit, <laughs> you have to turn it on and off again. This one throttles per tap, so uh, uh, it's pretty cool. So you can even load your page in different tabs, throttle them on 2G, 3G, Wi-Fi, and see how they stack up against each other. So that's the device mode. Um, we go. And now for something different. So the first rule at Google uh, for upcoming features is uh, you don't talk about upcoming features. Now I'm going to break that rule. 
I'm going to talk about upcoming features. Uh, there's one, uh, 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 one reason I, got a, I could get away with that, um, finally, is, uh, and most people forget about that, is that Chrome DevTools is a completely open source project. So all of this happened in open, in open source, but uh, most bug tickets are really well hidden in the bug tracker. So, <laughs> and and some of, uh, uh, most of the ideas that I'm going to share with you today do not have tickets yet. They will have them very soon. But uh, this is all very new stuff. So DevTools tomorrow. How could DevTools look like if you look at them from a design perspective? But first of all, we have never had a designer in the DevTools team. So the DevTools grew organically. Now, we, we have a great team of developers, but those developers aren't designers. They aren't designers, and if you give developers the, the, uh, the, uh, the task to design a feature in, uh, in DevTools, it's uh, sometimes a bit like giving a gun to a monkey, as you can see right here. Um, so, you have to be careful you doing that, but we didn't have another choice. And the great thing is we now have another choice because we just hired Max. Meet Max. Yes, Max is our new designer, and he works exclusively on DevTools. That's amazing, and it's the first time this ever happened. Uh, so uh, we, you will see some mocks that Max produced uh, in this session. And please follow him on, on Twitter if you'd like to learn more about design and DevTools. Now, I'd like to focus in DevTools. Again, as I said, everyone has a different workflow. And the word workflow is very important to me. I actually dissected the word and tried to really make sense of it and came to the actual word flow. If you, if you, if you think about flow, flow is a state of mind where you completely focus on something, where you're in this in a state of mind that feels extremely natural and you just keep going, keep cranking, and, and, and and it, it's perfect, right? Once you achieve that mood by using certain type of music, by using a certain type of tools or emotions, it's amazing. So I tried to focus on that even when designing those dev tools. So I went back to the drawing board, and uh, I want to make something really simple, or well, maybe not that simple, but really simple. Um, and the two goals that we had is first, dev tools looks and feels amazing because. Uh, as a designer, most of you probably hate using tools that are not designed well. Second, your site looks and feels amazing, which is the even more important goal. So you want to achieve that. OK, that's kind of a no-brainer. How do you achieve it? We achieve it by using a UX term uh, or UI term, which is scrim. Now, I didn't know about scrim before. It's kind of a, a, a linen cloth. And in the design world, it's something you put behind. Uh, this was actually from the material spec. You put it behind text, so it's, uh, the text flows above the image. Um, so this is something new I learned. The actual reason I have that word up on, uh, on here is because it stands the first letter characters for the story that I wanted to create. The story is we want to make dev tools that are both smart, colorful, responsive, intuitive, and material. Now let's go into each of them for a bit. Let's talk about smart. Well, one thing we would like DevTools to become and to have are audits that work differently than the audits that you have today. If anyone of you have spent time in the audits panel, what you get is you get a profiler. Uh, and you, you profile. Uh, it, it runs for a bit and then gives you a couple of instructions what you could improve. I think we could do better than that. We could do smarter audits that run live on page. So the, uh, one of the cases would be a typography audit. A typ typography audit would, uh, would include things like automatic margin and padding recognition, automatic line height, uh, things like contrast. Why cannot, why does a tool not is this, why is DevTools not able to figure out if my text is too close to the box? That's an easy thing to do. We can fix that. So that's the typography audit. The layout audit, again, focuses on things like contrast, on misaligned boxes, really just pattern recognition for things that we think you've done wrong, 
and giving you a small warning that says, hey, I think you've done something wrong here, like a pat on your shoulder that says, hey, you could probably improve that. Uh, the next one is a flex assistant. And you might be thinking, okay, flex assistant, I know what a flex assistant is. This is a flex assistant. Um, <laughs> but no, I'm talking about a different kind of flex assistant. So uh, by flex assistant, I am talking about flex, uh, the flex model. Um, and uh, what we've been thinking about is uh, doing a UI builder that allows you to preview how all flex properties look on page life, which I think would be a really cool thing. And I need to hear your input afterwards. Now, as you can see, there hasn't been a lot of screenshots in those here. Um, and that's because all of this is brand new. But we did have a story for you. We do have a story for you figured out. And that is the next one, which is color. So with color, I'm very passionate about color. I love color. Um, I love color theory. I love color wheels. I love the new palette that we created in material design. So we. So I thought about what could we do? Well, we could do color swatches, we could do a gradient designer, and we could do more in-depth color theory. The first two, we have a pretty nice story, I think. So to look at some of the marks that Max created for the new version of the color picker, let me give you an idea of how it could look like. So this is a new color picker. It comes, it looks very natural. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's still kind of smallish but it has a lot more stuff in it. Now, this is the basic version of it. But if you, if you look at the more advanced version, you can toggle between RGB and HSLA. You can go one step further and use color swatches. So we have a couple of different smart color swatches in here. If you click on our toggle, it brings up the color palette. And there's a couple of modes in here. One is CSS Auto. What does CSS Auto mean? It means that it automatically figures out which things, which colors you have used on your page right now and puts them all into the palette. That's an easy thing to do, and it's a smart thing to do, too, just to figure out, hey, I'm going to use the same color. Next one, hopefully built in when we release it, is the material color palette. And not only is it the primary colors of material, but once you hover over those colors, it brings up the entire list of shades for the material palette. So all of material palette in that, in that demo you have on the right, that basically, in this color picker, is the entire material palette right there. So that's palettes. And then uh, finally, adding, adding swatches is super easy. You just drag around in color and then hit the plus, and it will add it to your new palette. But how about gradients? Well, this button that you see in here uh, is a gradient selector. So you pick it, you click it, you click on a linear or radial gradient, and what happens is the, the color picker stays the same. The color picker is still the color picker. But what happens is in your page, the focused element turns into a live gradient editor. So it blends in, uh, blends in control points to modify the gradient in place. And if you click on one of those control points, it reflects in the color picker to allow you to quickly edit a gradient and have a look at how it looks like right on, there, uh, on that page. So this is how it will look like uh, finally in, uh, in, in action on the page. What do you think about the color picker? Good? Yes? All right. Cool. Next, responsive. Now, this is going to shock some of the developers in the room. Uh, but yes, we want to make the device mode in DevTools to be the default mode for DevTools. The way it looks right now, uh, it would probably get a lot of attention because it's quite in your face. Um, but we're going to change that. We want to do a simplified always-on device mode that is much more narrow in its baseline, that uh, fades out if you don't need it, but it's the default. The reason for that is that we, when we again, when we went back to the drawing board, we figured, hey, why are we doing all those things for the desktop world um, as a starting point? I mean, what's the point in doing that if, you, if, if the whole world is moving to mobile and to tablets and to, to whatever, to TVs? We should start at the bottom like we, we do with progressive enhancement. We should have a real story to do mobile by default. And that's what we like to do. So put in the uh, device mode, enable it by default, 
make it look uh, as, a, as a whole piece with DevTools. Um, that's the simplified, the simplified device mode. At the same time, we want to improve it. We want to, um, that is work already in progress, actually. Uh, we're including device art into the device mode, a centered view that centers the device, uh, and also centered rulers that uh, are integrated with the media queries that uh, are similar to maybe some of the tools you've used in the past. Next, intuitive. One of the things uh, is the CSS transform builder, where if you click on one element and it has a transform defined, on the page, like with the cubic Bezier editor, it shows you a preview of all of the states the animation did. Uh, you, you might have seen something like that in Firefox, where it shows you little curves of how it was transformed. But we really want to show you different states of that element. If you click on one of, one of those different states, it gives you control points to modify those states. All of them can be modified in real time on that page and applied. The next mode that fits into that is the new layout mode. We want to make it ridiculously easy to build prototypes with DevTools. So easy that we want you to be able to take an element and drag it around on page. Now, it will not do what you think it will do in all cases. Uh, but we will try to make automatic assumptions that are smart. If you drag an LI around in your UL list, it will move its dump position by default. You can hold like, controls or whatever to change it. If you move an absolute position div, it will change the left top position. Every of those elements will have uh, rulers around them, uh, sorry, uh, uh, handles around them that let you easily shift the margin, the padding, and more. Uh, there will also be a backside of the element which reveals the image source, if you were looking at an image, the A tag, the link. So all of that should be able to, should, you should be able to modify that right on the page. You should be able to click on a text and overwrite it. Um, those are the things we would like to do with the new layout mode, which is an extension to the inspect mode. Finally, material. We've seen some of it already, but we could go more than just colors. We could do animations. We could have, give you live previews of animations. Uh, we could give you a material UI builder if you'd like that. Um, that gives you easy access to, I want to turn this into card, and I want to have the exact shadow that I need. Um, or any of the other UI controls that are fairly popular, a header, a sidebar. So that's Scrim. Uh, and I think it makes for a pretty nice uh, story for the first couple months this year. Finally, uh, I think you're awesome, so you should come help us. Again, as I said, Chrome DevTools is all open source, so there's no reason to not actually help us. You know, most, most projects say, hey, yes, your outside, comp outside contributions might be nice and good looking, but you know what? It's against policy. No, there's no policy. <laughs> The policy is you submit screenshots and bugs and contributions, and they get into the product. So what you have to do to do that is actually fairly easy. You open designers.chrome-dev.tools, and that will, come, that will lead you to a Trello board that we just set up a couple days ago. That Trello board includes all of the ideas I just talked about, including the screenshots from the color picker, and we will extend it as soon as we have new screenshots for you for the next features. That Trello board is public and allows anyone to comment and vote on ideas. So really, this is, uh, this is not just uh, a hint. This is the reason I did this presentation. I want to create a real connection between you designers and us DevTools builders. I want to find out what you would like, if you like those ideas that I just announced, if you want them differently, and if you, want to, if you have a great idea of how one of those could look like, please attach a screenshot. Um, and then hopefully, we can all profit from it. And that's that. Thank you.